All right, we got the record working. This is Quentin Conway coming at you live from Kansas City. I'm going to have you guys introduce you one more time since I did that before I started recording. We'll start. Uh, we'll start down in Texas. Kenny or uh, Anthony, you you shoot first and just tell us your name and tell us where you're at again. Go ahead. All right, Anthony Canlin here from Wichita Falls, Texas. Fort Worth. Uh, shit. Wow, I've been drinking too much. Uh, cornbread. Fort Worth. Shoot. Sorry. All right. Who else we got? Uh, we got Ray Harmon in Grand Rapids, Atlanta, Georgia. Chris Moore, Grand Rapids, Michigan. Ken Mahako, Grand Wisconsin. Drew Mahar, Moorhead, Minnesota. George Soria, right, well, Kansas welcome. City, Missouri. Rock on, George. Sorry, I didn't mean to talk over you there, bro. Nice. All right, so I just want to give a couple of reminders to everybody out there in Listen Land. Open format here, and here's how we're going to play this game. I want you to text me, and my phone number is 816-582-9216. Text me some questions as we go through this panel. We're going to do a and answer format. You can also private message me via Facebook. So hop on Facebook and just shoot me a message, and we will get your questions answered. Uh, we'll try to get them all answered. just depends on how many we've got come through. And what I'm going to do is kind of act as a moderator just to kind of keep things going and, and divide it up. We've got a very diverse group of fellows on here. And um, what we want to try to do is get everybody's question and everybody's input from all different perspectives on what we got going as a man, and it works. But first and foremost, what we need to get under our belts is the notion that when we're down there at conference this year, we got to get this going. Cave. Cave. It's a it's a grunt call, so we all, so we all know. So when you when you're, you're being tooled around with your wives and you're getting introduced to a husband or a significant other, you got to give him the grunt call. Cave. And if you get a grunt back, you know he's a caver, so we're good, right? All right. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to start it out. I've got a couple questions that people have shot me already. Um, and I'm going to start this one. I'm going to target on this question uh, specifically – uh, Ray and Chris, I'm going to ask this question to you all because the question was posed to me, what's a typical day in the life of an ambassador like? So we've got a very diverse group of guys on here. That was one of the questions that was posed. So, shoot, what's a typical day in the life of an, amb- an amb- ambassador diamond and it works as a dude? Go ahead, Chris. All right. Well, uh, first of all, there are no typical days uh, in the life of a networker. Uh, so every day really is completely different. Um, I, we, we definitely get up every morning, get the kids off to school, and then we uh, usually sit down and work for a few hours. Uh, we usually spend the early part of the morning on the computer, uh, returning phone calls, returning emails, uh, follow up with any um, – any blitzing or anything like that that we've done, then we'll usually take a break uh, midday. Uh, the afternoon usually we'll we'll usually split up. Either I'm with the kids and Nikki will go out and she'll do some blitzing or meet with some prospects or vice versa. Uh, we'll do the same. Uh, and then a lot of our evenings are kind of split up as well where uh, one of us is either out doing something or um, – the other ones with the kids. So, and really, every day is completely different, and it just depends on uh, on what we got going in particular day or week. Yep, good stuff. The uh, you know on, on my side, not not a whole lot different than that. It's uh, different every day. I will say that uh, coming out of corporate America, I personally try to uh, structure a little bit around you know I'm going to do this on Tuesday. I'm going to do this on Friday. Uh, whether it be tracking cabs or, you know, whatever it is. Um, but, yeah, that, that's pretty much it. Get up. Uh, Rhonda, Rhonda's busy as hell and <clears throat> doing all the all the personal, personal stuff. I tend to do the back office stuff, and uh, and that's it, and day by day. It's the, it's the same stuff. It just bounces around depending on which day it is. Sounds good. It's all different. There's right. no doubt about that. Uh, I like what Chris said. There's no typical day, and there's no doubt about that. There is never a typical day because something is different each and every day that we've got going on here. So, All right, guys, so here's going to be the money question. And I'm going to start with Anthony on this because I like some of his his videos. They crack me up. Um, And there's a lot of variances of this question. So I'm going to start with a simple version, and I'm going to let you run with it, but I'm going to hone in on some more defined versions of it a little bit later. But how do you blitz as a dude and it works? Anthony, you're up. <laughs> All right. So how do you blitz as a dude and it works? Well, it seems 
any of my videos, you'll know that it's ridiculously easy. It's so easy, in fact, that a two-year-old little girl can do it. So if you're a man in this company and you are not listening, just know that my two-year-old little girl is more manly than you are. So Especially at the mall. Um, yeah, at the mall. Uh, it's really easy, man. You just... The the biggest thing as a man and it works is that I know I don't know for I can't speak for everyone, but for me, I came into the game kinda late. When when I came in my wife was already a double diamond. Um she'd been doing this for a few months, you know, I didn't really know what was going on. But I wanted to get involved and I was like, Okay, well what can I do? And butching was one of those things that was like she just hated doing. And I was like, Well, Give me a blitz card. I'll go give it to somebody. And it just kind of went from there. Um, for, you know, for me, it was I was never afraid of being told no because I didn't really have anything invested in the company. You know, a lot of our wives, they, you know, blood, sweat, and tears go into this. And um, when someone tells them no, they take it very personally. And for me, you know, if somebody told me no, I was like, okay, you know, whatever, I'll go find somebody else. So, uh so I just kind of went from there, and I just took the Blitz cards, and I'd walk her to people, and I'd sometimes I'd say, you know, something along the lines of, here's a coupon, or, um, you know, this is for you, or whatever. It, it started off that way, and then eventually, um, you know, I'd, I'd either I'd take it one step farther, and I'd actually try and, you know, tell them what, what was actually on the card, you know, this is this is what we sell, you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then sometimes I don't even say anything, you know. If I if I feel like somebody's in a hurry or they don't want to talk, I just give them a card, let them go. And uh, you know, it's it's you know not guaranteed that they're going to call me back, but at least they have the information. So, um, blitzing as a man and it works is something that I think every husband should be doing because we are in that unique position where um, well we should be in that unique position where our feelings don't get hurt that easily when someone tells us no. So for me, it's it's been a it's been one of the things I pride myself on is is blitzing because you know a lot of ladies they they don't like to get told no because they take it very personally and I, and I just don't care. So. Well, and I think too uh, I'm going to add to this. I think that people like to try to define blitzing as some specialized event. Like you have to I have to schedule it and I have to set it up and I have to make it this big ordeal that I'm actually going to dedicate my chunk of time to going out there and doing something I'm calling blitz. We challenge our people and we teach our people, whether they're male or female, the same way, bro. you got to live the blitz. Your life is a blitz. You are always looking for opportunities to drop nuggets in conversations. So blitzing isn't just about handing out a card. You know, it's about wearing stupid bracelets or wearing a green shirt or, or you know, anytime you're out there with your fellows, man, dropping seeds, planting seeds all the time. So... Because you never know when those 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 plants are going to start sprouting out of those seeds. I mean, that's that's the number one way guys communicate with each other is digging at each other. That's how we do it, fellas. You know, and so I'm always looking at opportunities for my guys to dig on me. And when I'm when they dig on me, that gives me my chance to blitz. And all blitz is is, is living your business, talking about your business. Drew, what do you do up in the uh, the the cold and tundra up there? What do you do to blitz, man? <laughs> well, uh, I just kind of worked on developing. You know, just like what I was going to say was my big deal. So I just, you know, you kind of, you do it here and there and you kind of trip over your words, you know, after a while. But um, as you do it more and more, you kind of form, you know, just that, those the wording that you're going to use. Uh, and, and it becomes more comfortable the more you do it. Um, but since my wife has, you know, started this business as well, and she retired me from corporate America in, in October, I've been able to go in and just talk about, you know, that, like, you know, I've encouraged our team to, you know, even if you're not comfortable blitzing, just start working on developing conversations with people. You know, like if you're going to the store, if you're not comfortable yet giving out a blitz card, just work on that. Hey, how, you know, you're working at the grocery store. How's it going here? Uh, is this your lifelong dream or, you know, how's, you know, Walmart treating you or whatever it is, you know, oh, you know, it's this sucks or blah, blah, blah. And then that gives you an entryway right away to uh, kind of say, oh, really? Well, you know, my wife's doing this business. She's retired me from, from my day job. And the only circumstance she said is I have to give um, her this coupon for a Blitz card or this Blitz card to everybody I come in contact with. And then, you know, just kind of go from there. So 
a lot of people hate their job or it's just a quote-unquote job. So if you just kind of start trying to connect with people without even purposely trying to blitz them, I think you, you know, you, you uh, get used to just talking to people and uncovering a need, and then the blitzing is just, you just, like, fall right into it. So that's kind of what I do. I I just think the more you do it, the the easier it gets. I agree with that 100%. You've got to build a routine, get yourself trained for it. Kenny, you've got kind of a unique situation. You live in a more rural setting, I think. Uh, (laughs) what, what what, What do you do to blow up a blitz, bro? I mean, how do you pull that off? Uh, for myself, I I haven't blitzed a whole lot. I mean, I do when we when we travel, when we're uh, in airports and stuff like that. We do travel a lot as a family, and I try to work it in that way. Uh, my biggest thing is I try to uh, I've tried to make myself a better person by using the products, you know, uh, strength training and, and things like that, and which which ends up in a lot of people asking me, do what I'm doing, you know. And I just say, you know, it, it's simple, you know. 30 minutes of exercise and I, I take these pills, you know. Just like any other diet plan, everything everything has uh, healthy eating and, and exercise, you know. We at least have fat players to where you can, you know, not have to eat healthy all the time, you know. So we kind of have a, a step above there. So that's kind of my way of blitzing is just turning myself into a blitz card. And that, that seems to be to be the biggest thing that I've done. And uh, I, I I patrol a lot of uh, Facebook groups and pages, you know, introducing myself, getting them over my page. I have my own fitness page to where, or my own Facebook group to where I add all my my uh, clients into. And then I uh, just tell everybody what I'm doing from day to day. You know, everybody helps each other out. That I guess that's that's my way of blessing, you know. I live in a town yeah, of, you're, of... You're living it. You're of, living the bliss. Right. I live in a town of 2,000 people. You know, the closest town, big city to me is, is Green Bay. It's two and a half hours away. So my <laughs> my everyday blessing just doesn't work out so well for me. But I try to fit it in when I can, you know, traveling and that. Yeah, so. right. Right on, George. Hey, let me ask you this, bro. You, I know that you're rocking this mostly solo. A single dude, sexy as all get out. How do you rock the blitz? <laughs> How do you rock the blitz as a single dude? And I want to. I'm gonna. I'm gonna hone this question differently. How do you rock a blitz to a, to as a single dude to women without insulting them? That's a question we get all the time. Like, how do you talk to women? How do you blitz women without offending them or insulting them? I really just. Uh... I said I lived the blitz. I mean, I went to your guys' training up in Omaha and just listened to you guys talk. And from that time on, you know, I just started. I always had the blitz cards with me, but, you know, wear the green, wear the shirts, wear something, just something to get their attention. Um, As far as approaching women without offending them, I mean, it all just starts with conversation. I mean, I talk to a lot of people. I'm pretty friendly. People tend tend to like me. And, you know, I don't say, hey, you know, check this out. i got something that you need. It's just whether I hear them talking about, you know, their weight loss or hating their job, whatever the situation may be, I kind of fill them out and just kind of get into conversation from there. So, I mean, perfect example. Uh, huh? Go ahead. No, keep rolling. Keep rolling. Go. No, I said Friday we were down at uh, Cork and Brew and – sitting there eating with some friends, and the waitress, you know, sitting there telling us about her, been doing this for so many years, always working, making people money, and this and that. She kind of complained about her job, and we're like, well, and we were talking to our friends, they're loyal customers, and they're sitting there eating with us, and uh, we're like, hey, I go, we got something, an opportunity for you, you know, and she's like, what? And we're like, have you ever heard of it works, you know, and she's like, no. Start telling her a little bit about it. I was like, told April, I was like, hey, I go, put a wrap on her. And she's like, huh? I'm the fan of her, like, you got saran wraps in here? She's like, yeah. Went and put it on her, and she loved it. And she started going around showing other customers. She's like, she's like I can sell this. And we're like, hey. So we met with her again uh, two nights ago, and she wants to become a distributor now. So. Rock on. See, it's amazing what happens when you just open your mouth, isn't it? <laughs> it just oh, yeah. It's talking about the product. You know, we tell people and we teach them, you know, we have got, like, the trifecta working right now, man. We've got... A product that works, we have a business model that works, 
and we have a timing situation that works. It's like the trifecta, bro. I mean, we have a vein society for a vein product, and all you've got to do is be willing to talk about that thing. <clears throat> Everything else falls into place after that. You've got to get wraps on people, and the only way to get wraps on people is to talk about your product, talk about your business. So I'll let anyone else who wants to close this out, you know, the question is a lot, and it's an important question because I think guys struggle with this. For me, it's easy. So because um, uh, I don't have a problem talking, and I don't worry, going back to what Anthony said, I don't really worry about people getting upset about what I'm saying. I just move on to the next one. And so that's, that's a strong red in me. You all know that. And so, but sometimes you've got to slow down and be, be cognizant of what you're doing. How, how is it? What are those keys to talking to women when you're a guy that you're not offending them? Anyone else have anything to add to that? Yeah, yeah. I got a little bit on the, on the psychological, uh, psychological side. If you see a woman walking through Walmart – Right, she's buying diapers, baby food, so on and so forth. She doesn't, she doesn't have the nicest of clothes. Her hair's not all done up and ready to go. <coughs> and you look at her left hand; she ain't got a ring on. More than likely, she's single, or she's got some bonehead that knocked her up, and you know they're just kind of <laughs> hanging out. Right? <coughs> Perfect business opportunity. Pay attention to what, what what I'm getting at is pay attention to what they're wearing, how they're acting, the way the way they're moving through the store. I mean, it's it's you don't have to hit every one of them that are in a pencil skirt and you know a, a V cut shirt. <clears throat> Makes sense. We teach our people. We we teach our people, and I'd like to hear. I mean, Corn was kind of saying you target some folks, which I don't think is bad necessarily, but you know we we teach people hardcore not to target anyone because you know Pam says. You're one blitz card away from changing someone's life, and you're one blitz card away from changing your own life too in that capacity. But you, you know what we found time and time again is you just never know who's going to rock this out. The people we think are going to be rock stars aren't, and the people we, you know, the people that we don't think are going to be rock stars are rock stars. I like where you're going, Corn, because you're you're trying to fill a need. You're saying, hey, I see somebody that could could really benefit from our product. Right, and right. I, and that's, yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. It. Yeah, and approach that. But but you never know, man. You just never know because the person standing right next to her who is married is all, all fancied out could just rock and roll this thing because that's what they've been looking for, the next big thing for them. It's so hard to tell. I mean, I, I've so true. struggled with so that. True. You just never know. Yeah. Um, but as far as women are concerned, you know, <laughs> uh, I, I like the coupon approach. Joel always makes me laugh because this is such a simple thing for he and I. But, you know, it's one of those things where you walk up to someone and you just ask them what they'd like a coupon, and that's it. That didn't offend anyone, <laughs> yep. right? Yep. Um, but so many people are worried about offending those ladies, and, and I'm not saying that's wrong to, to to think that way. But sometimes we get mired down on our own thought process. So, anyone have anything else to add about approaching the ladies when it comes to blitzing? Keep yeah, it simple. Uh, I think an easy way for guys, uh, you know, I know, I know uh, Pam really pushes, you know, the, the coupon and the, you know, uh, leading with the wrap. But I think a, uh, even a more subtle way to do it is to kind of go from the business perspective, uh, you know, yep. explain the business opportunity to them. And then, of course, that naturally leads into the wrap. So you're not going up to them saying, hey, I think you need a wrap. But you're going up and saying, hey, we had this awesome business opportunity. Uh, this is a little bit about what it does. This is our, you know, number one product. And then you can kind of lead right into the, you know, the applicator from there. And it's just, it's an easy way to kind of take the pressure off. And it's not all about the, you know, it's not all about the wrap right off the bat. Sometimes yeah, you're not well attacking them. their appearance necessarily. <laughs> they right. tell a lot of them will take it. <laughs> yeah. Somebody else was trying to speak up there. Did somebody else have something to say? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, when I, one of the things I do, this is Mike from Bend, Oregon. I always hand out, not always, but a lot of times I hand out too. I just say, can you, I'm introducing a new product to the marketplace. Can you do me a favor? This may or may not be for you, but, it, you know, here's a product. Can you just show them this is what it is, this is what it does type thing. If you could share that, uh, that would be great. And you take the pressure off of them thinking that they need it, you know, especially if it's a skinny gal or something at a coffee shop or whatever. I don't know if that helps. Rock on, rock on. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> this is a business that, that both men and women can, can prosper in. I mean, there's no doubt about it. And it's just really kind of finding your niche and where you're comfortable talking and how you're comfortable talking. And, you know, whether you're rocking it solo or you're rocking it, rocking it with, you know, a significant other or, or a female, I guess I'll say, there's so many different approaches to how this can work and how you can make it work. And so um, one of the questions that was just asked me was, of this group that's on this call that's answering questions, who's retired and who's not because of it works? I'll, I'll answer that first. I'm Quentin. My wife, Lori, 
Conway is an ambassador. She retired me back in August of 2012, so I'm retired with It Works. Chris? Also, August of 2012, we retired, shut down my chiropractic practice uh, that was 14 years old. <coughs> Rock on, Ray. Yeah. How about you? Yeah, Ray, October 1st, 2012. Rhonda Hartman, shut me down. <laughs> <laughs> Drew, what about you, bro? Um, October 31st, uh, my wife's a triple diamond, I'm a diamond. So I was working at Verizon, taking care of business accounts and doing really well, but, uh, you know, spend my time wisely and make a lot more money this way. Anthony, how about you, bro? Uh, let's see, my wife and I are presidential diamonds. Uh, I didn't actually retire. I was in college. Uh, so I guess you could kind of say I retired from college, but. <laughs> wow, you never did work. <laughs> Corn, you're still working, right? Corn, you're still working, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And Kenny, what about you, bro? I'm still working. Family business. Uh, my wife has retired herself, uh, so she's staying at home. And we uh, recently uh, are starting to homeschool our kids so we can travel easier. So. Rock on, man. Rock on. And George, yeah, yeah. you're still working, right? I'm still working. And hopefully I can retire this year. <laughs> <laughs> right, right on. Anyone else that I missed there? All right, right on. Here, I'm going to move on to the next question. I just got text to me. Um, it says, advise on encouraging DTs below you on getting their business going and not giving up. Boy, this is the million-dollar question right here is yep. how do you encourage the people below you to see it, feel it, breathe it, live it, and get it and start working their business? Anyone want to take a stab at that first? I will. Do uh, it. Camp is my, my answer for everything. Uh, for for a lot of my team, you know, from from where we're from, we have to travel everywhere, so it's a little bit tougher. But we are starting to branch out across the states here, so it's easier. But boot camp is the answer for everybody, I would say. Yeah, yeah, this is Ray. I'm I'm gonna go with what you posted a couple of days ago, Quinn. Uh, Art Williams' uh, yeah. speech to uh, just do it. Right, I mean that's that that that's the short answer. Uh, long it, before, long before, that's right. Long before Phil Knight Nike, it was uh, Art Williams, and it was just do it. Go out there and get her done. If you want it bad enough, you're going to get it done. And if you don't want it bad enough, then you're going to make excuses. And uh, and the short answer is, you know, you're not going to make excuses and money at the same time. Um, so you know, you got to pick one. Anybody else? Hey, this is Anthony here. Um, this is something that my wife and I went through a lot of in the beginning. And it was, you know, you, you sign people up. And, and for us, it was huge because, you know, I was a college kid. You know, I just got out of the Army. Uh, she wasn't working. She was a stay-at-home mom. All we had was a little bit of money from the Army for me going to school and stuff like that uh, to live off of. And, you know, this company completely changed our lives. And we wanted that for Everyone, every single person we signed up, we we wanted it for them, and um, we realized really, really quickly that just because you want it for them doesn't mean that they want it. And we realized that they have to want it before anything can happen. And so it, it took me a real long time to kind of come to this conclusion. And uh, and it it might come off kind of harsh, but if if I contact you, let's say three times, right? And uh, you don't contact me back, or you don't, you know, you're a new distributor, you don't contact me back, you know, that's it, you're done. I'm never going to contact you again unless you contact me. I'm not going to waste my time trying to get someone to do this business when I could be out looking for people who were just like my wife and myself who were eager and ready to do it. So um, in the beginning, we wasted a lot of time trying to get people who didn't want to work to work. And, um, and I feel like if we had just done what we do now, where we say, you know, do your training and get back with us. If they don't do their training, we don't, that's it. You're done. We're moving on to somebody else who actually wants it. And when you want it, you let us know. And and that was kind of a big revelation that we had, you know, just, just a few months ago, really. I'm going to, I'm going to dive in and echo that. Well, my, my wife and I, ambassadors, 
to learn this learn this the hard way um because we it's amazing to me how you will bleed yourself dry working with people who don't want to work and you you do it all backwards it's your nature to try to work so hard on the people who don't work instead of pouring all of your energy into the ones who do work and it took us a long time to figure that out and so you know, we tell people, run with the runners, walk with the walkers, and wave at the people on the sideline because you've got to keep doing what you do. And I love what you're saying, Anthony, because we do the exact same thing. We give them a test. When we sign people up, and the test can be different for different people. It, you know, it could be something as simple as, hey, I want you to go read this document, and I want you to post, make a post on Facebook about what you got, you know, what you took away from it. Or I want you to, you know, watch this video and I want you to shoot me a text and tell me what stood out to you. And if they don't do those tasks, you know, if they don't pass that test, then, then well, I'm telling you, you're hard-pressed to get a lot of love out of us because we're going to test you in the beginning. Until you're ready to start working, well, you're not going to see us much. And so that's a valuable lesson. You can, you've can, got to be there, and you've got to stay with those folks. You've got to be an encourager, but don't let it drain you, and they can suck you dry, man. And so you've got to run with the runners and walk with the walkers. Anyone else have anything to add to that? Because I think it's a really important topic. You know, how do you get those people yeah. below you moving? Ugh. I know they're why. Uh, yeah, I was going to say that, but go ahead. Yeah, no, well, I mean, that's that's it and that's that. I mean, it's it's as simple as that. Know why well, they join the business. You work with those that deserve it, not those that need it. If you have those that, that deserve it, some, some struggle a little bit, and you have to help them develop their why. And I think once their why is established, everything else falls into place. Well, I guess maybe we ought to push the pause button here because there's probably a handful of guys on this call who have no idea what a why is. And it, it occurred to me. So right. I'm going to just nominate. Chris, tell me what a why is. Your why is the reason that you get up and do what you do every day, whether it's it works or anything else that you're doing in life. It's, it's your motivation. It's the thing that you're shooting for, you know, down the road. Uh, we always, always identify uh, people's wives right off the get-go. I think that that is probably the single biggest thing to do in the beginning uh, because you can, keep, you can keep bringing that back to them. When things get tough, when things get slow, when they're struggling, we always go back to their wife. This is what you told me six months ago. You told me that you wanted to stay home with your kids. You wanted to be able to retire your husband. You wanted to be able to pay off your house and get out of debt. And it's just, it, it's, and that why is different for everybody, but you just, you got to tap into that and you got to revisit with them over and over and over so they remember why they're, why they're doing what they're doing. Yeah. Chris, I'll echo that as well. Um, that's that's a prime. That's five slides in a presentation for us. Um, why is a huge deal, and uh, quite frankly, the biggest deal at the end of the day, right? Uh, people do things for a reason, and uh, and if they can't identify the reason that they're doing things, then they get a problem. So, um, I think we all know a ton of people like that, right? Uh, but the why is the biggest thing. Identify it, codify it, you know, publish it, uh, show it to everybody, and uh, and off you go. And and you can always tie back to that when things get tough. Well, I, I don't want that nugget to be missed. I want to repeat that because you both said the same thing. You know, when you've got someone nailed down on their why, when you understand – what moves them and what motivates them, why they're doing what they're doing, what is their why. When you've got that nailed down, when those people come to you in those desperate times, when they're struggling, man, they're ready to give up, it's yep. not something you're saying. You're only giving back to them what they fed you. Exactly. This is your why. This is exactly. why you yep. told me you're doing this. What yep. motivated exactly. you? And and that is powerful, folks. That is the that is the doctor's medicine right there. Anyone yep. disagree with that? No, sir. No, I, don't. I agree. Not at all. I guess that happens. It's your goal. It's your goals with passion. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. 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 All right. I'll move on to a separate question here, um, and it kind of goes back to blitzing. And so I've had this question in various forms messaged to me tonight. And so besides blitzing, and what I think they're meaning by, in this example, and but besides handing out a card, um, what, and we kind of address this a little bit. But what are you doing? to spread your word about it works. So some of y'all are working, some of you are not, and we're not talking about just walking out handing out cards. Um, and some of you, like I think, Corn, you, I mean, you can't spread the word where you're working. So what are you all doing? I'll start with you, Corn. What do you, what do, you do to Blitz? What do you do to Blitz outside of handing a card out? What are you doing to spread right the word? Um, anytime I go anywhere, no matter where I go, um, whether it's on lunch break, 
um, after after I leave the shop and I'm I'm headed to the house, blitz cards are in my pocket. And uh, one of the things that I learned when I was overseas, um, I, I learned how to make paracord bracelets or 550 bracelets. <coughs> Excuse me. I made a neon green and black paracord bracelet, right? I wear it nonstop everywhere I go. Quentin, you kind of you you addressed this back uh, in one of your videos about about having neon green um, shoelaces in your golf shoes. Same thing. People look at it. I see that they look at it, and that, it, that immediately I engage them. They they see they see wow this this big ape looking dude is wearing this neon green bracelet. <laughs> what is that? Um, when I as soon as I leave the shop, I have to I have to change clothes. So immediately I'll put something something funky on, something funky that says it works. Um, I'll, 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 you know, I, I can't necessarily change my hair or my, my, my uh, facial hair or anything like that, but I can throw an It Works shirt on that's, you know, neon green. Again, people look, it's a big ape walking through, the, through Walmart. Hey, what are you? That's my end. So we've determined, Corn, that you do all of your blitzing at Walmart tonight, right? Right. <laughs> Word. <laughs> Bit of um, uh, yeah, George, it, what do you do to blitz, bro, instead of handing out a car? What do you do, man? Just live it. I'm wearing the green, wearing it works. Uh, I mean, right when I started, my brother, I mean, he's a DT now, and he wasn't at first, and he's real skeptical, and my sister's been pretty successful with it, so he's kind of seen both of us do it, but... um. He works down there with me, and he's leaving when I get there. And I'm walking in, and he's like, man, you're a walking billboard. I'm like, yeah. I go, Everybody I see, you know, I want them to know. I mean, we got a fitness center at work. I go up there, guys sit there, and they try and give me shit at first, you know, just, you know, why don't you just put a wrap on? Why you got to be in here? I'm like, well, do the wrap. I go, that's all good, but, you know, it ain't going to build muscle. And uh, just, I mean, I just love it. I mean, green shoes, it works shirts, uh, green bracelet. Everything. <laughs> Ray, what do you do to get outside the blitz card? What do you do, bro? Uh, blitz card. Well, outside the blitz card, uh, for me, it's 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 conversation about the product to everybody that I can strike up a conversation with. All right. So uh, that's that's anybody from a contractor in your house or the guy doing your pest control or uh, grocery store, the gal in front of you in line. Um, blitz cards are, are helpful when you got them in your back pocket and when they're not, that's okay too. The gal who cuts my hair, actually I should say the gals, right? Because I never go to the same place. I'm cheap. So, well, it uh, takes a long time to perm that hair. Right. Oh, I'm telling you what, I'm telling you what, I'm telling you what, and they do it wrong all the time. So you got to go somewhere else every time, but, uh, you know, you always got a different person and, uh, and they always say at two o'clock in the afternoon on a Tuesday, they always say what? Uh, you going back to work after this? No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm, I've been working since I got here, and I'm, I'm working when I'm leaving. And, uh, uh, you know, it, it, it's all that. It's, it's any possible opening that you can have to discuss the product. Anybody you meet, anybody you can talk to, um, it always comes out the same way, which is, oh, well, that's, that's, that's kind of interesting. And if you got a blitz card, that's great. If you don't, uh, you know, it's all about discussing the uh, business opportunity, the success, the, you know, uh, you name it, uh, the, the, the product uh, success, and, uh, and kind of moving on from there. And, and that's been actually pretty beneficial. I think we've had a handful of those folks that, that have uh, gone, wow, really? You know, and, and that's really what you're looking for, right? The wow, really? I agree. Chris touched on this a little bit earlier, and this is something also that I teach pretty adamantly. Um, you know, I'm into shooting a shotgun. I'm not shooting a 22, so I'm going to try. I'm going for the masses here, and and the masses will speak this language: guys hear business, women hear products. I'm going to say it again: guys hear business, women hear products. That's not every time, but I'm telling you, that's the masses. Anyone disagree with that? Negative. Absolutely. No. No. And so you got to keep that in mind when you're out there spreading, 
when you're talking and, and when you're dropping and planting those seeds, you got to keep in mind who your audience is. Kind of goes back to what Corn was saying with your target. When you're targeting people, know how you're targeting them because different people are. You know, one of the most important things you can do, guys, if you've never done it, is take that color test. Read up on the color, the, the color, the personality colors. Because yep, once yep, you yep. understand, I thought it was so stupid at first. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, but <laughs> I dove into it, and the more I realized how red with a touch of blue I was, the more I could relate to people that were not only like myself but unlike myself. And I knew how I came across to them. Not that I didn't know that before. But when it's laid out in black and white, it sure hits you a little bit harder. So if you've not done that and you want a task to take away from this phone call, it's go read up, and I'll, maybe I'll find it and post it on the cave, man. But you got to do that. Read up on that, the personality colors because it, it will change your perspective on how you're communicating with people. Anyone have anything to add to that? Clinton was just mad about the color thing because he was purple. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say I'm a really red purple because I'm I, I got some blue in me, but I'm pretty red. So, okay. Anyone else? Anything to add to that before I move on to the next question? Okay. So we're pretty heavily weighted here on active guys, and I just realized that as you guys were talking, I assembled a team here that are very active guys, and I probably should have included someone who was less active. That was a, a, a mistake on my part. So what I'm going to ask you to do is step out of your box. And, and how do you encourage, and Ray and I talked a little bit about this last night, but how do you, how do you encourage or what's the, the one piece of encouragement, maybe I'll narrow it down so we don't all talk a long time here, but what's the one piece of encouragement you would give to guys who are not active? They are in that supportive role. I ended up at the man cave because my wife added me. She made me get a Facebook page even. And or they're just not active distributors. Maybe they I saw a question was posted on the cave yesterday about, you know, be honest, who who's here because your wife filled a square to get to her to her promotion. So what what advice would you give or nugget would you share with the the guys that are in that situation who aren't active um but who who are still there. I mean they're still part of that. Drew, I'm gonna start with you. Um, I would definitely um, obviously be supportive in, in however you can, like if you have kids, uh, stuff like that. When we, when we first started, I wanted my wife to just run like crazy and do what she wanted anytime she wanted. I didn't want to give her a hard time for being up late or, you know, another night doing a rap party and I'm with the kids or whatever because... You're a good I man, knew, Drew. <laughs> I knew... I'm still married, so that's good. <laughs> um, but I knew that... I knew that network marketing was a good opportunity. We've tried other things and failed. It was more my my idea, and I knew she'd be great with this, but she wasn't quite on board with those other opportunities. So when this came in, it was her decision. I was all for it, and I just said, do it, do whatever you need to do. I'm not going to give you a hard time. You know, I, I'm going to take care of the dishes. I'm going to take care of the laundry. I'm going to, you know, do all that kind of stuff. Um, and, you know, we were both still working full time, and. So I, I would say just, you know, be that supportive role. If you if you can do more, um, you know, if you're if you're comfortable talking to people and you give someone a blitz card and just say, my wife's paying me to hand these out to people and push it off on her. Like, hey, you know, if they start asking questions, you know, you can say, I don't know anything. She just, she's going to, you know, let me do this or that if I hand these blitz cards out. So, um I would just say, yeah, definitely be supportive on the home front if you can, and then I think everything else comes around or, uh, you know, helping out with mailing stuff. I ran millions of trips to the post office, mailing maps to people, you know, and just being supportive that way. So. What else? Who's up next? How about you? Who have we heard from a little bit? Chris, you're up. I, I I totally agree with that. I, I think that you know any any support that you can do, kind of you know behind the scenes, is hugely important. Um, I think the single biggest thing that you you can do to hurt you know the the situation is to you know not be supportive um, and not you know not help out, be discouraging. I mean that's that that's just that's the quickest way to kind of you know kill this whole thing. Um, I, I would encourage guys because uh, I would I believe my, my guess would be if somebody is not on board that they just haven't kind of seen the light yet, that they don't, they don't really realize what the potential is. Because once you've seen what can become of this, I don't know how you could not be on board. So I think maybe a lot of times that they just, you know, maybe they haven't gotten to, you know, corporate events. Maybe they haven't gone to boot camps. Maybe they, you know, get 
you know, get to those things, and, and once your eyes are open, you're going to be all in because you, you're going to see dollar signs from here to eternity. And I think that a lot of the times when guys are not on board, that they just haven't been, you know, they haven't seen enough, they haven't been exposed to enough, they haven't been open enough to just really see what the potential is with this. Kenny, what do you think? Can you hear me now? Hey. I can hear you, bro. What do you think? <laughs> hey, you know what? My memory is just shot out. I forgot to push um, star six, so I was just sitting there like, hey. Because <laughs> nobody, <laughs> nobody hear me. I was sitting here tripping out like, man, what is going on? Why they got me blacked out? But, um, yeah. Um, I forgot what I had to say. What were you guys talking hey. about? How do you encourage those guys who are not active to get them going, to get them off that hump and to start rolling? Gotcha. I would say, I mean, some guys that I hang out with or actually don't hang out with, I go out with them, you know, and just show them. And, you know, they kind of trip out on, you know, the comments I get like somebody will say, oh, wow, you sure have a lot of green. And then, of course, I'll say, yeah, it's company colors. Then they'll say, oh, what's the company? And, and that's an instant for me to put out a bliss card. I, I'm pretty good at making, you know, starting the conversation to where it, you know what I'm saying, turns in my favor. I mean, wearing your colors is like a good way to, to do it. I call it my uniform. I, you know what I'm saying, every day I come out in my, my green and black. If not, I got on gray and green or something that, or my bliss card around my neck, you know what I'm saying? The more you talk about it, the more you put it out there, the better you're going to be, you know what I'm saying? Because you can talk to 500 people. If you get 80 out of that 500, I mean, you take it for what it is, you know. If you get 100 or 200 out of that 500, you take that for what it is. But if you're not talking, your business is always going to be closed. So you just got to you gotta be just doing it all the time. Yep. All right, Ray, you, know, gonna, you want me to drop this bomb or do you want to drop it? Because I know you and I agree on this. What do you say to those guys that are in the background? <laughs> What's the number one thing that you <laughs> – what's the number one nugget you give to those guys? Well, I'm going I'm to back yeah. up and answer your first question first and then uh, and then hit that. Um, you know, the biggest thing for the guys, and let me and let me, let me me share this, because Rhonda, my wife, has been uh, in network marketing for over 12 years. And uh, my primary job for the first 10 years was to talk to guys and uh, quite frankly, go out and pick up kids and deal with a bunch of BS, you know, from guys who are, we're not doing this network marketing thing. I don't want to hear about this pyramid scheme and, you know, this whole thing uh, is, is, uh, is lifestyle. Lifestyle. Lifestyle is a huge thing. Um, if you can show a guy a decent lifestyle, who is a, uh, you know, a hardworking blue collar guy who's just got all the wrong, all the wrong ideas about MLM, you know, multi-level marketing. Um, boy, I'll tell you what, that goes a billion miles. Um, that's, you know, I, I, I just can't even imagine that, uh, that anybody wouldn't respond to, you know, uh, a February day on the beach in Florida uh, that was paid for by, you know, some MLM, you know, kind of scenario, uh, as opposed to them pulling that money out of their pocket themselves. And, uh, and, and that's been the biggest thing, uh, Quentin, you know, honestly, that, that, that has really been the biggest thing. It's been 13 years for me looking at that, playing that role and, uh, <clears throat> lifestyle. It, I, I just, I can't say it enough times. Um, yeah, and I, I think the biggest problem in, in kind of what we talked about the other day is those guys and and gosh, we we see this so often, and, and I play this role a lot too. And I'm a I'm a red, so I don't have any issues with this. This may not be for everybody, but you know, a lot of those guys they just got to get over themselves, man. They want to talk okay. to me. They want to know what's going on. You know, their wives want me to talk to them. And here's what it is. We're all stubborn dudes. We're so stubborn because we don't see it. What Chris was talking about, you know, we've got egos that are a mile high, and we think we know everything. And quite honestly, we don't know anything about this. And that's scary right. to us, and it's something we don't dedicate time to. It's like in one of my videos. It's like we care about three things, work, family, and our nothing time. And if, if it works, is going to interfere with any of those. Well, I don't want to hear about it, right? And so yeah, no. you got to you got to get over yourself. And so, man, that's a tough one. Those guys that are sitting in the background. You all don't see it. You don't see it, and I know you don't see it because I didn't see it. So I can say that as he, 
Um, I know Kenny's been dying to jump in here. Kenny, you got something to add to this one? Absolutely. I was uh, completely unsupportive of my wife when she joined the business. Uh, for months, she was in the business and just she had a few parties and this and that and just just went nowhere, you know. Uh, I think I think her biggest biggest problem was me dragging her down, you know. I was uh, not happy with her being gone all the time. I wasn't, you know, verbally abusing her or anything or anything like that. It's just uh, <laughs> she just knew I wasn't happy. Um, so when she was on the phone, on the computer all the time, that, that kind of made me mad, you know, when, when, like when we were taking our vacation, she'd be up in the, the hotel uh, front desk and that, you know, I'd be like, oh, come on, you know, we don't need to do that. I'd be embarrassed, you know. And, and for months, we just sat there. She sat there and, and did nothing, you know. Uh, finally, you know, she, she did break away and started, you know, to make a little bit more money. And she showed me one day, she said, you better stop your bitching. And she showed me the paycheck, and I'm like, all right, I'm on. Where do, where do I sign up? And, and little that, that I know is I was already signed up as a distributor. She was using me to fill her diamond chart. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, one month later she was diamond, and like three months later she was double diamond. So that that was that was my aha moment, you know, was was showing me the check. Being it's supported. amazing it's how we good. listen to money, isn't it, fellas? <laughs> I mean, that's why it's, it's consistent, fellas. I mean, you talk business model to men, and you talk product to women. George, you got anything to throw in on this one? I'm going to take that as a no. No. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, I'm here. Quentin, Quentin, Quentin let, me, yeah. let me say this thing. This is the word for 13 years. This is the word. Pride. Okay? Guys have pride, which yep. is a good thing, right? It's a good thing. It's, uh, we, all know, we all know that. It's, uh, nothing wrong with it. However, when pride gets in the way of progress, you got a problem. <laughs> And and that and that has been what I've seen over the years. Uh, pride getting in the way of progress is not a good thing, and uh, and that's what we need to kind of caution everybody away from. And and uh, of course we have no gals on this on this call, but um, that would be that. That's it. I mean, right? I mean, the husbands, the wives, or the husband, the uh, the, the spouses, the better halves, the fiancés, the boyfriends, you know, you got to put your pride in the shell. You know, you got to be done with that. Uh, you got to check it. Check it at the door. Check, check the pride. That's right. Because at the end of the day, um, you're going to end up retired. <laughs> That's know? exactly right. Hey, and we're living proof of that right here. A lot of these guys on this call are living proof of that retirement statement. I'm just going to yep. throw a reminder out there to you guys. If you have specific questions, Shoot me a private message on Facebook or text me at 816-582-9216. Feels like a telethon, doesn't it? Send your donations to – all right, so here's another question. It's a variation of that. So we've got the guys that are kind of stubborn. We've got the ego. I don't know. Maybe maybe they're just not interested. Maybe let's just give them – we'll give them good credit. Let's just say they're not in the way. They don't have the ego. But this just really isn't their gig, you know. They're not, they're not that person that's going to be out there talking. What are some things – um, behind the scenes, uh, Drew started talking about this, that he did. What are some other things, you know, maybe from a technical standpoint even, that guys can do to help their ladies um, in this business if they don't want to be that, that active partner, that active spouse, that active whatever? So, Anthony, what do you got for me? Well, that's a really good question, and uh, that's kind of where I started. When, uh, when I finally got on board, uh, for me, I wasn't all about, like, you know, being up front. I was like, you know, I want to help, but basically tell me what to do. And and my wife did. And what I ended up doing, I did a lot of caring. I did a lot of setting up at parties. I did um, a lot of tearing down at parties. I wrote emails. I did phone calls. I, uh, I follow up with people. Um, you know, all those all of like the nitty gritty things that my wife just really didn't want to do. She just told me to do those. And since I didn't know any better, I was like, okay, cool. I'm helping. And, um, 
so that was kind of my, that's where I kind of started behind the scenes. And then, you know, well, I'm kind of an attention whore, so I ended up in the front eventually. But, you know, not everybody likes that. Not everybody likes to be, um, you know, not everybody likes to have eyes on them or, or, or whatever. But, uh, I don't know, it's, it's fun for me. So it's kind of where I transitioned. But before that, I mean, I was literally, you know, a cave dweller. I you know, sat at a computer and typed and made Facebook posts and texted people and, you know, did all that stuff. So uh, if you're not if you're not willing to put yourself out there in front of everyone yet because you're afraid that we're going to smoke something weird or whatever, which we probably will, but I'm pretty sure everybody thinks I'm pretty weird and it doesn't bother me any, um, you know, that's a great place to, to start and great thing, a great thing to do for your wife so she has more time to go out and get in contact with, you know, other ladies and set up these parties and do whatever. And then, you know, you taxi them over there in your truck or whatever, like I used to, and you, you know, carry the bags inside and, and, uh, you know, and it has its benefits. So I like, I ate a lot of, um, vegetable trays and cookies and stuff at these parties. So I mean, there's benefits to, to being in the background. Corn, what, what do you think? What are some things that guys can do, you know, if they don't necessarily want to be that lead horse, you know, what can they do to, to still be supportive, to still play that supportive role? I'll tell you what, man, it, there's, there's, I, I can probably say without, without a doubt, I'm probably, we'll, 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 we'll shift gears, never mind. Um, take care of the housework. It's as simple as that, man. I mean, wash the clothes, do the dishes, take care of the kids, um, you know, the the simple things. Make the bed, man. Stuff that, that women, you know, just pine over that they need to have done to make them feel complete for the day, handle it. You know, let them go rap. Let them go talk to people. Let them, let them be the lead horse. Sit back, pull off a, you know, a, a sip of whiskey and and be cool <laughs> with sitting back in the shadows. <laughs> yes, agreed. I agree 100. percent That's how, dude. I, I agree with that 100. percent Started out the same way. I I wasn't unsupportive at all, um, but I was not active, and thereby I would call myself not very supportive. But what I did do was I saw my wife. Um, she had such a passion for this man. I've never seen my wife so excited, so passionate about anything in a work-related environment like this, she saw it, man. She got it. From, I give her so much credit because she, that burning was in her belly way earlier than me. And she saw it. And, you know, and I tried, kind of like Colin was saying, man, I just tried to stab away. And we've got four kiddos at home. So I, I took up, I took up the task of doing a lot of stuff around the house. You know, I did a lot of stuff around the house anyway, but I took up more. I made it my goal to make sure that she wasn't doing some of the things that she did. And it doesn't have to be huge dramatic things, but, but I, I mean, it, it can just be those things that take up so much of her time to free her up so she could do the things that she needed to do. Um, and, and, but I think there's, there's, a, there's a functionality to this that we're missing too. Uh, and maybe, Chris, I don't know if this is your personality or not, but, you know, maybe you can comment on there's a whole technical aspect of this business from numbers, you know, crunching the numbers, handling the taxes, handling the business side. And, and you know, I, I worked in banking for years, and I, I've always noticed that it's almost always there's one numbers person in a group, and more times than not, and it's not always that way, but more times than not, it's the dude. Um, anybody have any insight? And I'll start with you, Chris, if you have anything else to add to that. But what about the technical side of this? I mean, that's a good way guys can support and not be in the way. I got Absolutely. I, I think that, uh, you know, anything that they, you can do kind of behind the scenes, uh, you know, there's uh, – and everybody's in different places, you know, in their business. I think early on for us, uh, something, that, you know, because I was in my practice full-time at that time, I didn't have a lot of time during the day, you know, to be able to do a lot of the, you know, the, the day-to-day things. But what I could do is I could get on in between patients. I could get on Facebook. I could introduce myself to, you know, new teammates. I could answer questions, you know, product questions or whatever it was. So there's a lot of that little technical thing um, that you can do, especially in the beginning 
And then as you start to grow, I mean, there's, you know, there's cab reports and there's, you know, there's so many different kind of tracking that we can do and, and different reports to see who's working and who's not working. And, and you can reach out. And, and if you're uncomfortable with talking to people face to face, you can text them, you can email them, you can send them messages on Facebook. So there's a lot of ways that you can, you know, if you're not comfortable with being out there, that you can kind of hide behind but still really be helpful with the business. I agree 100%. Um, you know, Ray, you're, you're kind of a technical guy. I think you came from corporate America. Anything to add to that? Well, no. Yeah, actually, you got it nailed it right there. It's, uh, uh, I'll tell you right now, outside of blitzing and meeting people and talking to people when I'm out, uh, my primary function is exactly that. Uh, pulling reports, uh, digging through, dumping them into Excel, uh, you know that that that's a huge deal outside of it's big. Know, I mean, it should not be underestimated because that's scary no. to a lot of people. I'm not just not just women, but but that for my wife that was huge. She was not doing that stuff, and so I do it all, and that was a huge relief for her. Mhm. Mm mhm. I agree, yeah, Anthony. No. You got something else to throw in on that? Yeah. Um. You know, listening to all these things, it kind of reminded me of you know back when uh Samantha first started doing this, and um. One of the biggest things I did before I did anything else, you know, before I was carrying stuff or wearing the T-shirts or whatever, um, I was always on her case because I didn't understand, you know, the nature of the beast. And she was always on Facebook and she was always on her phone and doing this and that. And then uh, where I messed up is I would I would give her, you know, I'd give her a hard time about that. And so if you're not going to do any anything else, you know, if you're not going to um, – you know, if you don't feel like you know enough to coach her team, you know, you don't know, have enough product knowledge or whatever, or you don't, um, you're, you're still working, you know, like Chris said, he was still working when um, Nikki was doing all this. Uh, you know, if, if there's anything else you can't do, just be quiet and just let her do her thing. Because I gave my wife so much trouble about this in the beginning. You know, you're always on Facebook. You're always on your phone. You know, I, I felt like, you know, I was being ignored, you know, and and uh, I didn't want to come out and say that to her, but that's what I felt like. So I'd give her, I'd give her grief about it, and uh, and so I think if you, you know, if you're gonna do nothing else, keep your mouth shut and let her do her thing. And eventually, you know, you'll see kind of where we're all coming from, and and it'll totally be worth it. So just let her do her thing. Don't get in her way, um, and just be quiet. If nothing else. Yeah, I, I love so much what you just. I, I love it, and, and the reason why I love it is, you know, we get up on stage, and you're going to, if all of you are going to conference, those who are going to conference, you're going to hear some awesome stories, and some stories, you know, I'm familiar with a lot of them, and, and, and the great thing about those stories is they're all excited, and they're telling you their passion, they're telling you why this thing is so great, and all the glorious things that have happened as a result that it works, and that is so dead true, but what I think we miss is the very real variable that, you know, my wife worked her butt off. I've never seen her so dedicated to anything, and it caused some hellacious knockdown, drag out fights. Because, <laughs> like you, Anthony, I felt the same. I felt I used the word. I feel neglected. Like you're, everything is more important than me and the kids in this house because you're working so hard, and that's hard to hear. Um, and that's hard to say. But we had to get real with ourselves and find a balance between because that passion that she had because she saw it, man. She saw the vision and I'm so glad that she did, but I'm so glad that we, we have an open relationship where we can have that kind of drag out fight and still be real with each other. But what you're saying is dead on, bro. I mean, once they see it, once they get that passion, stay out of their way, <laughs> stay out of the way until you see it too. And then you'll start rocking this together. I think that's vitally important. Anyone else have anything yeah. to add to that? Cause I, I think it's crucial. I was going to say Quinn, absolutely. Um, and, and, and when you feel neglected and everything, the best way to start feeling like you're not being neglected anymore, get involved. Because as soon as I got involved, man, our relationship was like complete 180. Everything was perfect, you know, rainbows in the sky. And, uh, and I got <laughs> on board with this. And it was like now, you know, we spend all the time in the world together, and we're both doing something we love. And she kind of made me love it. So, you know, if, if you're feeling neglected, get involved. That's really good. It's really good. Anyone have anything else to add to this before I move on to the next question? 
good. All right, yeah, this yeah. question is more for the single dudes because there's a lot of guys out here that I, I think that will surprise you that are working this business for themselves um, without their partner, without their wife or their girlfriend or their sister or whoever. They're working this thing solo. And so I'm going to ask two two questions, uh, and I'm going to start with you, George. Um, the, there was a question, hey, what – what do you do as a guy for a party? Do you rock your own party? Do you have parties? How does that work? And then just generally, what's your strategy for being out there in the world as a single dude with It Works? Did I lose you, George? I guess we won't start with George. (laughs) George went to bed. (laughs) <laughs> He's asleep. All right, well, is, is it, none of us are all, all – I think everyone else is, is partnered up here. Is that correct? Is anyone else single in that? Correct. All right. Well, I'm going to address that question. We've got several guys. George is on our team. We've got several guys who um, are rocking this solo. And this question was actually addressed on the call a few weeks ago with Nathan and, Ty, and Kyler and, and Joel and Sasek. You know, uh, Kyler rocks this thing solo. And, I, and there may you got to hedge your bet there, I guess, from some people's percep- perspective, because he's a Pentecost, and I think some people get hung up on not listening or to him fully and what he's bringing to the table. But man, what he was saying was powerful. He's rocking this solo, and he had some awesome strategies for being a single guy working this business um, by himself. And I think um, we've got another guy on our team who's a very different personality than myself, but. What one of his claim to fame, one of his one the things he says often is, you know, in, we're in the Midwest here, and when I train people, I have a different philosophy and strategy um, than some than than others might. You know, I, I'm a good old boy. Uh, I know where I'm at. I know what I'm like, and I know who the people I'm working with are like. We're we're pretty conservative here in the Midwest, and. In the most part, chicks don't want me rapping them. I don't want to be rapping them, and their dude don't want me rapping them. So I, I encourage a lot of people in in our world to partner up with a female in their life to work this business with them so they're not working it solo. That's generally my encouragement. That's not the only way to do this. We've got a guy just in St. Louis who rocks this solo. And, and one of the things he says all the time is, look, you know, rapping a, rapping a woman isn't a big deal. It's only as big a deal as you make it. And I think that's a really powerful statement there. If you don't make it a big deal, if you don't act like it's a big deal, then you're going to be fine, you know, and more times than not, because this is just normal. This is what we do in a normal setting. As far as having parties by yourself, all the time guys are doing that. Uh, we've got people on our, ta- on our team, and I'll let some other guys speak here, but we've got people who are doing parties as their time, uh, all the time by themselves. And I think Kyler's strategy was really, really good on as far as rapping people you don't know. You know, you, get, <laughs> you have all these ladies showing up at a party, and what he would do is the first one to show up at that party, he'd say, hey, congratulations, you got a free rap tonight. You're going to be my rapper. And he would use that lady, the first one that showed up at the party, to be the lady who actually did the rapping for him. I thought that was genius. I don't know if you all heard that on the call. Anyone else have any strategies since George bailed on me on being a single <laughs> dude in this? I mean, are they doing parties on your teams? How are they managing it as a solo guy? I, I've, I've done it even though even though I'm, t- I'm teamed up with my wife, obviously. Um, typically what I'll do is take a brand-new distributor with me, and, and she'll she'll do that. She'll she'll pull off the wrapping, even though I'm doing the demos and I'm, I'm talking idea. to the distributors in the LCs. I'll pull in a, a distributor that hasn't done a rap party yet. She comes in. She actually puts hands on the females. I'm completely one, 100% hands off. Keeps all the legalities out of the way. Nobody gets <laughs> you know pissed off or anything like that. So that's another thing that you can do if if you don't have. A, uh, a distributor under you, then uh, I agree 100%, Kyle, uh, Quentin, the, the, what Kyler said on that call uh, a month or so ago, awesome, genius. Anybody else have, uh, you know, maybe with the, that have the big teams out there, anyone else have some strategies that they see their, their solo guys rocking? Yeah, I actually uh, got one guy talking about solo guys, one guy. And uh, unfortunately, I'm going to chalk this up to his personality. He uh, has no problem talking to anybody and getting anybody to do anything. However, uh, the way he manages that is uh, is on the benefits. 
right? Okay, so he sells the benefits. He talks nothing but about the uh, the benefits of the wrap and uh, and his uh, again. This is kind of a caveat. Um, his personality is such that 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 people will listen to him um, without getting offended, which I think is kind of the ongoing the uh, ongoing issue is about how do I not offend people, but. Um, he, he has the ability to not offend, and he talks nothing but about the benefits. All right, so it's all benefits all the time, the, the benefits of the grains, the benefits of the vitals, the benefits of the wrap, and uh, and he has no problem getting people to put wraps on, or put wraps on people, I should say. Right, 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 right. What about you, Drew? You guys got guys on your team rocking it? Uh, not quite yet. Not solo guys, no. Just the uh, supportive spouse, really. What about so you, Chris? I, you guys have any? Yeah, we have. Uh, one of the, I, I got something for you, Quentin. Um, one of the one of the things that you can do, um, and I have actually pulled this off, believe it or not. <clears throat> if if you have a woman in there that's apprehensive, pull them all in the into the living room, and then have them sit down onto the couch. Tell every one of them. Stand up, okay? When they stand up, tell them to sit back down, right? When they sit back down, that pretty much takes all of their excuses away from, you know, me putting a wrap on them, okay? You just did what exactly what I told you to do. You stood up. You sat down, okay? This is not a romantic encounter. This is nothing <laughs> nothing more than platonic, okay? I'm going to put a wrap a on you. Exactly. <laughs> I'm going to put a wrap on you. You're going to see amazing results in the next 45 minutes, and you're going to love me for it. Simple as that. Chris, you got solo guys. Platonically. <laughs> Word. Yeah, yeah, we got a we got a few guys. Uh, a couple of them, um, like the like the other guy said, is uh, they, their personalities. They just they have no problem. They can just go out there and they can. It, it's their comfort level, and as long as you're comfortable with it and you don't have an issue, the other person's not going to have an issue either. Uh, now the couple of guys that we do have that did feel a little bit more intimidated by that, they just went out and they made it their goal that their first distributor they were going to sign up was going to be a female that could help them wrap. And so that was, you know, and for them it was almost like a, it was a challenge. So I'm going to go out I'm gonna, and I'm going to go right up to somebody and say, hey, look, I just started this business. I need a business partner because I don't feel comfortable wrapping people, and you're going to be the person that's going to do it. And they've been very successful that way. Have you ever had any guys that are, like, doing all guy party? Have you ever, anyone ever done that? We've I've done a one-on-one. -on -one. Just one on one, but have you, you ever had a group of guys? Or I, I mean, we, we probably wouldn't call it a party, but you know, have you ever had right. a group of guys? <laughs> guys? I, I don't think anyone on our team has that I'm aware of. No, uh, I don't I think we have anyone else either. Okay. No. Um, who haven't we heard from in a while? Kenny, you're kind of quiet. I'm going to throw this question out to you. I'll start with you. Drew, Drew's been kind of quiet too. Um, one of the questions was uh, about appearance, or not really. It was kind of a question, but, you know, how do you encourage people to present themselves in a way, and this kind of goes back to living a blitz, I guess, in some capacities, but to present themselves in a way that's, that they sell themselves, meaning that you look presentable. You're not looking like a hobo out there running around. What what kind of encouragement or words of advice would you give to the fellows in that capacity? Uh, I like to say uh, be comfortable, professional. Uh, try not to look too sloppy. Uh, clothes too big for you or too tight. Um, get get your green on. I don't know. I I'm at a loss for that one. That's that's both green both, both the best that I got. Yeah. Um, what about you, Drew? What would you say? Um, well, it kind of goes back to growing up playing sports. Um, my saying I always told my parents, you know, you always want the best of the best equipment. Um, when I was playing sports, I always said, look good, play good. So if you you know if you're looking good, you're clean, you're fresh, you know, you got you know decent clothes on and a decent appearance, you look welcoming to other people. You know they're not going to be like, oh look at that weirdo over there and like you know go the other direction. They're going to be willing to speak with you and and see that you're a nice person and everything like that. So that's that's what I try to do is look presentable. Yeah, nobody has to look overly fancy, but if, unfortunately your your appearance. 
is the first thing that will catch an eye. And so people will make a lot of judgments on you, and I'm not saying that's right. I'm just saying they're going to make a lot of judgments right off the bat on what you're bringing to the table by your appearance. And so you don't want to look, you know, you don't, you want, you want to look becoming, not off-putting. And so you got to keep yeah. that in mind, you know, appeal to the masses in a sense. Hey, hey Quinn, yeah. let me load, load up on this one here. Uh, I retired October 1st, 2012, and uh, I took the month off. Boy, I'm telling you what, I had my Seahawk pajama pants on every day and, uh, you know, any variety of, of uh, T-shirts, and, and it was a fantastic thing. And then Rhonda said to me, said, hey, you're going to the grocery store. You can't wear your pajama pants, right? <laughs> and uh, I said, well, of course I can. And uh, she said, no, no, you can't. As a matter of fact, you're going to put some pants on, you're going to put a shirt on, you're going to take a shower, you're going to take the ball cap off, and you're going to put some blitz guards in your back pocket. All yep, right, yep. so that that that's the deal right there. Um, you need to, every time you go out, regardless of whether you're doing a party, right, or if you're just going to the grocery store and get your hair cut, you need to, you know, be dressed reasonably, um, whatever reasonably is to you in your area, and, uh, and, and represent, right? I mean, that's what it's about. You got to represent so that you, when you have that conversation with that gal who's getting your hair or the gal who's checking you out of the grocery store, that you're, uh, you know, you look respectable in in some way, um, without, you know, looking like me <laughs> in, my, in my Seahawk pajama pants. So going to the grocery so store don't look like really right. cool. By the way, by the way, that was really cool for a month. <laughs> All right, uh, I'm going to ask this question. I'm going to start out with um, Chris because I know you've got a team that's spread out a little bit. Um, the question was posed to me, how do you train and stay in touch with and encourage those distributors that you find that are that are outside of your local area, especially if they're personally enrolled? You know, because you, you've got a, obviously you have a vested interest in everyone, but you really have a vested interest – in those in those calves and those personally enrolled DTs. So, how um, how do you stay in touch with people that are not local? Uh, this is probably a great question for us because we have I would say probably ninety five percent of our team is out of state, um, and so yeah, I mean the, the vast majority of our team uh, we have to keep in contact with uh, primarily phone, uh, emails, text. Uh, Facebook has been absolutely huge for us. Uh, as far as uh, a training platform, I don't know how many how many groups that we are up to as far as our uh, different you know different teams. But I mean, we have 25 or 30 different Facebook uh, groups, and we do the vast majority of our training through there. And it and it's I, I, I joke all the time that if you know Zuckerberg ever figures it out, he's going to charge us an arm and a leg because right. I mean it, it it is we couldn't live without it at this stage of the game. I mean, it's been such a part of how we do everything that we do. Uh, but we do. We spend a lot of time on the phone. We spend a lot of time through emails. And it really is not its not that difficult to do. You just have to make the effort to do it. Um, we always go back and forth and try to compare, okay, are our local people, are they, more, are they more successful than our people that are afar? And it's not. I mean, it, it, a lot of it has to do with, you know, just the individual person. Uh, you have to find the way, um, you know, each with, with each person how to best communicate with them. You know, some people like to do the text and the email. They don't like to talk on the phone. Uh, some people exclusively like to talk on the phone. They don't want to be, you know, wasting time with text or, or whatever, Facebook time. Um, so you just kind of have to find what works for you. But there's a lot of different ways that you can do the trainings. We have a lot of uh, automated emails and things that we send out, especially in the um, early stages, like that first 30 to 60 days uh, with new DTs. Uh, so that they're getting a lot of information, but then we do have to follow up with them with phone calls and things to make sure that they're not only getting it, but that they're reading it and that they're following up on those action steps. Yeah, right on, bro. I can't. I, I mean, we owe a debt of ingrat. We're indebted internally to Facebook ourselves too, because we've got a lot of people who are not local to our immediate area. And I, I say Facebook, but really all social media. I mean, we rock social media out, and it has been huge for us. There's a lot of people that will, you know, complain and whine and say that, hey, they, I'm not getting anything off Facebook. I, I'm not using it. It's not been a valuable tool for me. I've heard a lot of people say that, and I don't get it. I mean, <laughs> we're still using no. it. We're still getting leads. We're sticking with it. We still get people that, you know, a year and a half into this that have been watching us from day one. Man, those people are watching you, and they're watching you to make sure that you are legit. 
you know, they're testing you out, and one of those tests is to see if you're sticking with what you're doing. And Facebook yep. is one of the ways that you can do that. Um, <clears throat> anyone else have any comments? Because this is going to go to my second question um, concerning Facebook and whatnot. But anyone have anything else to add to how you stay in contact and touch and training with the people who are not local to your immediate area? Use your e suite. There's, there's a massive amount of training. Um, documentation, uh, so on and so forth for the technical side, the green guys, the green personalities that that uh, deal with yep. facts and science yep. on the all those details. Right. Um, YouTube, Quentin, you and you and your woman have <laughs> have you you posted not too long ago in the in the cave. Uh, y'all have got fifteen or twenty videos out there. I, I mean, it's it's all just a matter of a question away from hey you know where where do i find this bang right there youtube e-suite get it yeah that that's a good point Corn. we we use youtube a lot to train our people um the e-suite has a ton of great training but you know we get enough questions on a topic we just sit down and make a video about it and you all are welcome. You all are all welcome to share and bogart everything that we make. And we put it out there on YouTube for you all to have. I'll, I'll post them. I think I posted the videos on the cave. But you did. You're all welcome you to those. There's, there's nothing magic about any of them. You know, we have a pretty hard strategy about there's a lot of folks out there doing some really awesome and nice videos, and I think they look great, and I think they are definitely doing what they want. Our approach has always been we want to keep things simple. We want to make things that relate to people in a way that they think, oh, I can do that. And so – I think training via video is huge, and I want them to think that, you know, I can just hop in front of my webcam and create a video to address a need, and that's what we do, yep. and that's why we – our videos are kind of cheesy in that regard. <laughs> but they're not cheesy at all, man. They're they're straightforward. They're right to the point. Hey, do this. Handle this. I am I am at this level. So, you know, obviously, if if you're if you're doing it, it works. Well, I think that videos are a really big way to keep in contact and, and train those folks. Um, let's talk about – I'm going to try to kill this call. Let's see what time is it. In probably like 10 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes. Everybody cool with that? Yeah. Yeah. be an hour yeah. and a half. Okay, cool. So uh, just for people who are hanging on thinking it's getting late, we'll go about 10 or 15 more minutes and we'll put it into this. Um, <clears throat> my my next question is going to be about going back to marketing. You know, people, we talked about this a little bit, but let's talk about some very definitive strategies that you can use for social media. We talked about YouTube there. But, you know, I think there's you could do a whole training just on how to use social media to your benefit. Because a lot of people, you know, they'll say, well, I announced that I'm a member of my, my team, and I, and I keep posting uh, the same picture over and over, and, and nobody's saying anything to me. Well, there's a reason for that. Um, but no. what, what, anyone have some very specific strategies for what they're doing on social media that they want to share with the group. Yeah, yeah, I will. Um uh, and it's not my strategy, it's it's Rhonda's. And it's been very effective for her, which don't puke on everybody. Okay? That that is the biggest message I can possibly give. Um we're all on Facebook, we're all looking at that stuff and there's some people out there that are just throwing up on everybody all the time, all day long. And 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 the the, the message you take away is boy, he, I don't want to hear anything about any of that, right? So so the short answer is um once in the morning, once in the afternoon because people are on in the morning, people are in the afternoon, but they're not usually on boat unless they're sitting at home, like uh, some of us. And uh, and that's it. Get the message out a little bit. Leak it out every day if, if we're talking about Facebook. Um, and, and and don't throw up on people. That That's the biggest thing. Stop with the, you know, 75, eight, you know, every eight minutes you're, you're putting a, a belly picture before and after up. And, and you know, people don't want to see that stuff. Um, except for when they do, which is not all that often. All right, that's 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 me. Anyone else? I would say, I've got a lot of definitive ones. Go shoot, go. Yeah, I would say um, I would say when you do post, I wouldn't say it necessarily has to be a before and after picture, but I think yeah. it's huge to attach some type of photo to what you're writing because that just catches people's eye to read your post more. 
So oh, something I always I always do like a Google search for for photos, and I'll p- type in like a few words that I'm I'm making a post about to find a a catchy photo. So reason why you know like uh, Pinterest is so huge, it's all based on pictures. So that's kind of what I go with, and we've had a lot of success with that. Yeah, but Drew, you're not doing it every ten minutes, are you? No, correct. No, no. <laughs> no, no, I think but his point. His point is dead on, and I don't want that to be missed. You know, and if you want to tr- you want to test this, go scroll through Facebook and tell me what posts you stop on. They're going to be the ones with the pictures. So I mean, yep. you know, t- they, you know, I said this when we were in Hawaii on that call, man. That's why you notice what Facebook has done as a result of the success of Pinterest is they changed your your profile to a timeline, which is all photo driven. Because that's the way our minds are working. That's the mo- that's the populace of the world out there stopping on those pictures. So Drew's dead on, and I think one of the things we teach people a lot is to use lifestyle pictures. People are stalking you on Facebook, man. They're watching you more than you think, and and like Ray said, they get tired of these bellies, you know, the before and afters, and so you start posting life lifestyle pictures, what you're doing. You know, Kenny's traveling all over the world, posting pictures about it, and people are going to start asking, "Am I right, Kenny?" Absolutely. Uh- that's that's my biggest thing. I have also incorporated uh, Instagram because just like you yep. said, nobody wants to read anything anymore. Everybody just wants to look at a picture. <laughs> uh, it's it's simple as that. It's just is is use what what everybody else is using right now. I mean, posting lifestyle pictures, just like you said. You know, everywhere we go, we we post pictures. Uh, our kids having fun. That's that's been our main focus right now is in is instead of our kids learning about the world in a book, we're we're, we're bringing the world to them, and that's that's our why now. I mean, nice. simple as that. Nice. What else? Anyone out there using? Got some Anthony? What are you all doing specifically? You know, some strategies that you guys are using on social media. Um. Well, really? Yeah. I'm I'm getting tired, guys. Uh, my wife really does all the social media stuff. She's like, she is like the Facebook pro. Like, I'm terrible at Facebook. Like, it takes me like a good 10 minutes to figure out just how to like upload a picture on it. I'm really not like that awesome at Facebook. But, um, I don't even really know what she does. Whatever she does, it works. And, uh, and I just kind of make jokes on Facebook. So, that's really all my <laughs> Facebook experience. All right, so we asked the wrong person. Chris, you got any specific <laughs> chat? <laughs> I'll, see, I'll see if I can do a little better. Uh, I, I think something that's real important that we've learned along the way, too, is it can't be all business all the time. Uh, you got to interject just your, you know, some of your family stuff. And, I mean, it doesn't have to be every time that you, you know, go use the restroom. But, I mean, just, you know, just some of the family outings that you do. I, I really agree with, like, the, with the lifestyle pictures. Uh, you know, part of the thing, uh, you know, three – Three and a half years ago, prior to us getting in the business, you know, we were watching, you know, Brandon Denise and uh, Brandon is Nikki's cousin, and um, you know, we were seeing them travel to Florida, we were seeing them travel to Australia, and see the, and it did, it piqued our interest. We weren't ready at that moment to jump on board, but it, it just it plants those seeds. Uh, we were at a meeting last night here in Grand Rapids, and Cammy was telling us that she had uh, one of her uh, best friends from high school just come on board after all these years. But the thing that did it was the, the photo of them getting out of the limousine that they took to, like, the Nutcracker or something right before the holidays. And that yep. was the picture that caused her to pick up the phone and call her and said, all right, I need to know now. And she's, I mean, yep. she's most likely been watching her for <clears throat> years, but that, that was something that just, boom, that was it. It was her getting out of the limo. That was the thing that made her pick up the phone and call. So you, you never know. Yep. You just never know. And you just got to kind of mix it up a little bit. I agree. Uh, those lifestyle posts are the money. I mean, that's it. Any anyone else here have anything else to add on on social media? The only thing I would throw in there, Quentin, is consistency. Um, yeah. You know, I I agree with I agree with not posting eighty seven thousand times a day, but at <laughs> least a couple of times a day. Consistency, because that if if you're if you're on if you're hot for you know a day or so, and then you're cold for a month or even even a week, even several days in a row, you know, the the people that are stalking you, they see that, well, you know, it's it's a flavor of the day, so eh, maybe he's not maybe they're not so so into it. Show them that you're all in, show them that it's that it's the 
the neatest thing since sliced bread, and and it is real. It is changing your life. It is changing other people's lives, and it will change their life. That's the most powerful thing you can do is those lifestyle photos. There's no doubt about it. And, and like Ray said, I mean, people just get tired of seeing them before and after. It's, it, you can saturate that, and people want to know what's going on in your life. They want to believe. Actually, they want to don't. They want to not believe the, the, the success. <laughs> they want to disbelieve you. You know, they want to know that yeah, you're right. Yeah. Yep. And then when they see when they see you traveling, when they see you make you know making those big lifestyle changes, they're like, oh, well, I guess there is something to it. You know, one of the things when we were in Hawaii, we were out in Hawaii for two weeks. And blowing stuff up. We signed three people, I think, when we were in Hawaii because they, they, they were questioning, oh, hey, this is legit. That's what those folks are really doing now. And so that was shortly after I quit my job. And those lifestyle posts are huge. There's a question I've got that's come up three different times in three different ways, and I'm just going to knock it out real quick and we'll call into this, this phone call. But the question is about um, money, uh, taxes. How do you guys handle taxes? What do you do? How does it works pay you? Well, I'm going to tell you, it works issues you a 1099. You are an independent distributor, so you're pretty much self-employed. That's how our contract worker 1099 is what you're going to get. And and what I tell people is, I've been a business all my life. I've done my own taxes all my life. I'm a numbers guy, and I got in over my head. My wife was making too much money, and I, that I knew what to do with. And at that point, you you spend the money and you hire an accountant and you be done with it. Because you hire professionals to take care of you professionally, and that's what you need to do. Now, that doesn't mean that you do that right out of the get-go, but that's eventually where you're going to get to. Does anyone have anything to add or subtract from that statement? Good point. That couldn't be more accurate. That is, that is, I mean, hitting it, you know, right on the head there. Uh, we had to do the exact same thing. You know, we, we always did the H&R block. Uh, tax return thing, and uh, when I was in the military, that was really easy because I didn't make, like, anything. You know, it took, like, five seconds. We were in and out and done. We got into this, and, I mean, it's just a whole different animal. So, um, you know, hiring a CPA for us was definitely the way to go. Yeah, you got to talk strategies. When you get when you start rolling some success with this, Amen. it becomes less about completing a t- return and more about completing a strategy. And so you, you need to hire a professional to help you with that. You've got okay, to stick some money aside. <laughs> that is 100% correct. Yeah, don't, we, we hey, it's all about getting out of debt. Well, I'm going to blow this up at the last minute here. I've got a celebrity. Uh, it cost me a lot of money. I had to get through a, a lot of red tape to sign this guy. You know, uh-huh. my people were talking to his people, and uh-huh. I brought him in here at the end to blow this up. Close uh-huh. this call out for me, Joel. Woo! All right. <laughs> um <laughs> Man, if people if people don't have enough from this call, uh, get the recording and listen to it again and hand it to every guy that you know. But the most important thing right now is from now until conference, promote the heck out of it. Get as many of your people there as you possibly can because that that is the most important thing that's going to happen this year. It is what's going to set up your business for the rest of the year. So the people that miss out on it, they're going to wonder why their businesses are growing so slow is because the people that come out of conference come out on fire. So if I can just give anybody a word of advice here at the end before we get off this call is get to conference, and then yep. we can all hang out. But yep. do it. <laughs> Hey, I'm going to I'm going to throw add on top of you there. I'm going to throw a challenge out to you guys, um, you know, the ones who are successful in this business, which are most of the people in this little circle. You know, Mark said something about spon- pick someone, sponsor them and get them there. I put my money where his mouth was in that capacity. We sponsored a DT that we signed last month. I think she's got it. We're going to send her. We're paying for her way to go to conference, and I challenge all of you who are making enough money Hell yeah. that, that that's comfortable to do the exact same thing. Find someone who needs it. Find someone who deserves it. Spend the money. Sponsor them so they can go to conference. I'm challenging Quentin, We're doing the we same thing. It. Yep. Doing the same thing. All right, guys. It's been a great call. Thank you for being on this. I know it was uh, kind of our first run, so we learned some stuff here. Um, we'll probably do some more of these. We might do them differently, but this worked out, I think, all right. And I really, really appreciate you guys coming in and sticking with us. It went a little longer than I anticipated, but it was good stuff. So thanks, guys. Awesome. Good job, guys. Thanks, thanks a lot. Thanks yeah, a lot. Thank you.